Are you ready to make the world's best transitions that look like this? These seamless and powerful transitions make any project look more professional, and they're extremely easy to create. My name's Jordan, and in this video, I'll show you three clean transition techniques in After Effects. If you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in After Effects with the footage that we want to put a transition between, and this first technique we'll be doing is super simple. Trust me, if I can do it, you can. I'm kind of stupid. We'll start off by adding an adjustment layer above our two pieces of footage. Next, we'll add our effects to the adjustment layer. This transition only needs two effects, the first one being motion tile and the second directional blur. Now that we have our effects applied, we can start animating. I'm going to put the playhead about 10 frames before where the cut in our footage happens, then I'm going to set a keyframe for tile center on motion tile and blur length on directional blur. Next we'll move the playhead right on top of where the transition happens. Then we'll go up to motion tile and start increasing the x value of tile center to begin moving the footage to the right. You'll notice though that right here where our footage repeats itself, there's a bit of a hard cutoff. If we want to fix that, all you need to do is go to the motion tile effect and then enable mirror edges. Keep moving the tile to the right until the footage lines back up with the composition, then we'll increase the blur length of the directional blur to around 100. You can see the blur is going up and down though, and we want it to be in the direction that our footage is moving, so we'll just set the direction of the blur to 90 degrees so that it matches. Now we'll move forward 10 more frames, then go back to motion tile and for tile center we'll keep moving it to the right until it lines up with the composition again. Then for the directional blur all you need to do is set the blur length all the way back down to zero. We're done making keyframes now and if I hit play you can see that the transition is working now but it's a little bit stiff. To fix that we're going to highlight all of our keyframes like this, press the F9 key to make those keyframes easy ease, then we'll go over to the graph editor tool. The first thing we'll do is drag to highlight the keyframes right here in the middle, then use these handlebars to pull both sides all the way into the center like this. Then we'll highlight the keyframes on the left side, use the handlebar to drag them as far to the center as you can, then do the exact same thing for the keyframes on the right. This is going to make it so that the transition starts off slow and then goes really fast right here where the footage cuts and then slows down again. This helps to obscure the fact that the footage is changing from one piece to another. This makes method can be applied for any direction as well, just use the motion tile to move it in a different direction and set the directional blur to match. So our first transition is done, but an issue with making transitions this way specifically is every time you start a new project, you're going to have to go through this entire process of animating the transition by hand. We actually offer a pack of pre-made transitions and VFX on our store, and it comes with a free plugin that allows you to preview the transitions and apply them to your footage just by clicking a button. Check out the epic VFX pack on sundukfilm.com if you're interested. It helps keep the channel running and it keeps me from being homeless again. Moving on to the next transition though, we're going to be making this zoom, and it's a little bit different than the first, but still really simple. We'll start by making two adjustment layers this time, then I'm going to change their length so that one ends right where the cut is, and then the other begins there, like this. Now for the effects we're going to use, I'll add transform and CC radial fast blur to the first adjustment layer, then I'm just going to add a motion tile to the second one. Next I'll move 10 frames before the cut, Make keyframes for scale on transform and amount on radial blur. Set the initial amount of the radial fast blur to zero, then move to the cut. We'll increase the scale to around 200 and the amount of the blur to around 100. I'll make these keyframes easy ease, then go into the graph editor and pull all of the keyframes all the way to the right like this so that it's at max speed right at the cut. Then what we'll do is actually copy these effects that we just made, make sure that the playhead is right at the cut, then paste these effects onto the second adjustment layer. Now if we highlight these keyframes on this layer, right click them, select keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes, it will play the animation that we just made on the first adjustment layer but in reverse on the second one. And now you can see we have this zoom transition that goes in and back out. Now you can stop here if you want, but I am completely insane so I'll be taking this one step further. The reason that I added the motion tile to the second layer is because if we enable mirror edges, increase the output width and height to 200, then change the first keyframe of scale to be 50 instead of 200. It changes the zoom effect from a zooming in and out to one full continuous zoom. And just like that, our zoom transition is finished and ready to go. 
This last technique is a transition rotation and it's super similar to the first transition that we made. We'll start again by making an adjustment layer. The effects that we're going to add to it this time are motion tile, transform, and radial blur. We'll enable mirror edges on the motion tile like usual, increase the output width and output height to around 200, go 10 frames before the cut, set keyframes for rotation and blur amount, then set the amount of the blur to zero. Go to the cut, set the rotation to 180 degrees, increase the blur until it's a nice circle shape, then go forward 10 more frames, increase the rotation to 360 degrees, and set the blur all the way back to zero. Make the keyframes easy ease, go into the graph editor, and just like the first transition, bring the middle keyframes all the way into the center, and do the same for the left and right keyframes so that it's max speed right at the cut. And that's really it. There's three incredibly simple techniques that you can use to create super clean transitions in After Effects.